before we break down your fundraising journey, I want to understand um, to achieve that kind of success, of course, you have to have the right team in place. So for either one of you who wants to take this, what was the hiring philosophy like and how did you ensure that you were building the right culture um, and you know, basically bringing on board the right players to, to scale that company? That's a very important question, Seth. Uh, thanks for asking. Uh, you know, the VCs, what they look for is a idea, especially the tier ones, that could be converted into a multi-billion dollar opportunity. And then the, the second thing that they look for is the team. And team, yeah. I would say, is even more important. And uh, when you're building the team, what you do is you always obviously hire on merit. And then you look for people who have the expertise in the area uh, which you're trying to uh, build the company. And so we went uh, to uh, an organization which had done a startup before and they were acquired by another company. And uh, we had worked uh, with those folks and uh, we identified who would be the right people to bring into the company to be able to uh, build a solution uh, at scale uh, for the large enterprises. Uh, so we started, hired our VP of engineering and started building the team that way. Uh, then we also did a very interesting thing, which we learned very early days at Cisco because you know when Atif joined Cisco, he was just graduating from university and uh, mm -hmm. within a few months they were so dependent upon him that uh, he had to go back one summer to take a few more classes and they were you know calling the university to just give him the degree and you know, just <laughs> more. so uh, so we learned very early on that uh, if you hire good talent from universities and marry that with the uh, with the experienced people then that can allow you to scale the company because you may not always find the talent very senior people, you know, in the industry that you were in. So, so uh, you know, it's not kind of 80-20 rule, but I would say probably 70-30, you know, 30% um, of the people are ex very, very experienced. And then, you know, mm -hmm. the rest of the 70 you hire uh, based on their capabilities and background from good schools and uh, good engineering background. Um, so that's how we built, uh, so, uh, you know, so, so the team is, team is extremely important. And then uh, the third piece I would say is uh, when you're trying to execute on the vision, you have to stay focused and not let uh, people do unnecessary things uh, because it's very easy to get carried away as engineers and build a very complicated system and yeah. also uh, unnecessary feature sets, right? Yeah, yeah not right. going to be utilized much. I mean, even if I look back at Cisco or some of the other companies, you know, a lot of the stuff that gets built, it never gets utilized by by the customers, you know, yeah. and then you always are focused on, hey, why did we build it? And, you know, should we just get rid of it? Even if one customer is using it, that you, it's very hard to get rid of the features mm. that you build. So, so you have to be very, very careful as product management team or engineering team to make sure that uh, you, you try to build only the necessary stuff. And uh, for that, you need a lot of experience.